Exciting uh, night tonight on the Ron and Fez show. A couple nights ago, we just found out that our own Billy Staples has done the John Edwards I Want to Talk to the Dead program. Mm-hmm. He was on an episode of Crossing Over. Now, uh, according to Billy, he was the very first guest <laughs> John Edwards ever had, launching his career, I guess, <laughs> into... Uh, oh, by the way, it's December 6th. Sorry, everybody. Uh, the uh, launching his career, Jonathan Edwards, into all of our living rooms now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did the pilot episode. We watched a little bit of it. We watched maybe the first minute and a half. Mm-hmm. Billy enters the show crying. Before anything is even said, there's a very weepy Billy Staples taking his seat. Just slobbering and crying and and moaning and groaning and smiling and... Uh, of just approval. And that's long before John Edwards has even said anything, long before Billy Staples has right. been, been contacted. I think what it was is Billy was just overwhelmed by what a handsome man John Edwards right, is. Right, sure. Just completely taken aback by the pure beauty of the guy. Now, I don't know uh, if, any, uh, if anybody believes in this guy. I mean, obviously a lot of people do. Personally, I don't see it at all. I think it's a carny gimmick from way back. This thing has been done since the beginning of time. People always want to believe things, and other people will say, I'll uh, help you believe it if you pay me. That's how I see Mr. John Edwards. Right, and anyone that's seen the Crossing Over show, right? the um, the fact that why the ghosts or the people on the other side, I'll put it that way, why they're just throwing out random letters. If someone's guy's name is Fred... Right. Why doesn't he just say, it's Fred? Why do you have to go through, is there an F? Is there a Frank? Is there a... Uh, Freddy. Oh, yes, there is. Yes. This is amazing. Uh, I knew something was happening. How could he have guessed my letter? Huh. It's like on the other side, there's nothing but Vanna Whites turning over letters. Uh, first, I see a white person coming uh, that's already dead, uh, an older person to you. Yes. Uh, if, uh, a, a grandparent? Uh, yes, it is a grandparent. <laughs> Yes, my grandmother. There's always mother figures and father figures. He throws a, it's like a mother figure to you. What the hell does that mean? I only have one mom. An older woman, you mean? She's my mother figure. Yeah. My mother is my mother figure. Exactly. So I don't know uh, how he does this. Billy, on the other hand, uh, honestly believes that uh, he talked to his... uh, Dead dad that day. He swears by it. He will not be convinced otherwise. All right, let's bring Billy in. Staples from the beyond now. Hi, Billy Staples. Hey, guys. Billy, we were just talking about you on your tape. Thanks for bringing it in, by the way. We appreciate that. Because we really wanted to see this. Now, you were the first televised guest... For the uh, John Edwards show? Yeah, um, I did the pilot. It was not the first show that ever Ew. aired. Uh, All right. But it was, I was the very first one that they ever aired. I mean, that they ever shot. All right, start mm-hmm. from the beginning. All right, so you were the first one, but you weren't good enough to be the pilot. You weren't good enough to actually be the first one on the air. Oh, no, it was good enough. I just think they had some bugs to work out with their production. Because uh, it, w- it was about a two-month wait before I shot it, before the show actually aired. There was about a two-month gap, so they had shot a lot of shows in the meanwhile. Uh, now you, uh, like we said when we saw this thing, you kind of entered the room crying. You were all teared up. Well, I was very excited. I was very emotional because I, I, you know, part of me didn't believe, but part of me did believe, and it was more or less looking forward to what could happen. All right, let's let's f- uh, set this up for everyone listening. Now you're shooting the the premiere episode of this show, the pilot episode. Correct. All right, is it everyone that showed up for the pilot? Did you go there on an acting job? No, not at all. Matter of fact, how um, did you get in? how did you get to be part of the first audience? The, uh, well, first of all, I wasn't part of the audience. I was a one-on-one. I was not just a member in the gallery and whatever. I uh, somebody there was an email and notice put out for people interested in being a guest on his new show, and I saw the email and I responded to it and I said what I wanted to do, and they were very interested in it, and they booked me as the first guest. What did you say in this email? Just that I wanted to contact my father, who's been dead for thirty some odd years. Did you tell me you're gullible? But I'm not. I know. Why would I tell him I'm, not, I'm gullible if I'm not? All right, so uh, I know. You're, you're a hard sell, you are, Billy. 
Right, I believe. I mean, it's it's a belief. I believe. I was there. I mean, you can say what you want about it, but I was the one who sat there. I was the one who was there. I was the one who experienced it. And... All right, you said seven minutes came on the air, right? Yeah. And how long did he actually tape with you? It was about 20 minutes, I believe. It just went very fast because right. he, he you said very, very quick. You said very little, at least on... Uh... TV. Right. They, he, they actually asked me before, he goes, uh, just let John do all the talking. If he asks you something, just try to get yes or no. Uh, let him know if he's on the right track. That was pretty much about it. Uh-huh. Because he, uh-huh. like, I said, like I said, he speaks very quickly. He doesn't even look at you. He looks off to the side, which is very creepy. Like he's seeing something that's not even there. You know, I do that, too, and people call me rude for it. I never make eye contact. You're looking for your accent. And people are going <laughs> over here. No one says, geez, he's deep. <laughs> they say, look uh, at me. Look at that Ron Bennington <laughs> in another thought-provoking trance. I'm looking out the window going, I wish I was anywhere but here. <laughs> Wondering if it opens and we can jump. No, he was definitely seeing something that none of us could see. Right, he's seeing where? Into the beyond. Yeah. Was Not he so- using his third eye or just the two uh, like you have? Just the two, like I, but he sees things with those eyes in his mind that normal, you know, everything. How does he do it? Does he explain his deal? Uh, well, he has explained it on his show a number of times. Because he's always had the gift, right? Yeah, he had it since, a little, since he was very young. All right, now uh, people are writing to me, how come if this guy uh, has this gift, how come he used to be a ballroom dance instructor? Really? Well, we all did stuff before we got in our chosen profession. He I mean, was... I used to work in a proctology lab, for God's sake. You know? But he was taught by people on the Titanic uh-huh. how to ballroom dance. He was trying to contact Fred Astaire. The hard way. Here's, uh, here's Dennis. Dennis, you're on our of Fez. Hi, Dennis. Hello, gentlemen. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. This whole situation makes me very angry. It's no secret. Time Magazine and Entertainment Weekly both had articles that say that this guy plants people in the audience with microphones to listen to other people, the audience, talk, you know, before the show. Yeah, who are you going to ask about? I'm going to ask about this guy. I'm going to ask about that guy. This guy is, is, is people are looking for spiritual truth, and this guy is giving them crap. And people just, you know, are buying into because they're desperate and they're emotional. And it's, it's not right. All right, Dennis, and let's ask Billy about this. How many people did you have contact with while you're waiting to get read by John Edwards? One. A cute little redhead, the assistant producer. We were walked in. We were ushered to the green room. You weren't left in an aw- in a room full no. of other people being read where you were discussing, oh, I hope he does this for me. No, I was not in the studio audience at all. I had no contact with any other people. How about talking. backstage? You ever say to your w- uh, wife, I hope it's my dad? You know, guys, it just it's amazes me that people, between the options that he's a con and there's some very fancy trickery going on, or the other option that he's actually talking to dead people, that people constantly think that the dead people option is the more likely one. But how can you explain my situation? And I wasn't in an audience talking about it. Billy, was the cute little redhead the ghost of Lucille Ball? No. Oh. Billy, people... let me ask you this. Did they, uh, did they edit anything at all during this that appeared differently if you watched it than if you watched it live? Yes. What parts? There was one part where uh, my uncle came through, who was a fireman, and they said he actually had a little bit of a drinking problem, like the party and stuff. And that what didn't pertain to him. That pertained to my stepfather, who uh, who, also who also came, came through. through. Yeah, who so when you were talking about your uncle on the show, mm-hmm. John Edwards was actually you're agreeing to something, but you were agreeing to your to your uncle and it was really your stepfather? No, 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 no. Because my uncle came through as a fireman in a cloud of smoke. That was all totally legitimate. I silver. And, uh, and then later he kind of just as an afterthought said, um, you know, he liked to party a bit and he, re- you know, he really wasn't here for you. He just wanted, yeah, he, you're not the reason he came here. He hoped you were holding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but if you're watching but that show, you would have thought it was the other person. Yeah, but that doesn't change. I mean, that was t- so insignificant No, I'm not, I'm not even saying that. Yeah. I, what I want to know is, does it appear differently live than if I watch it edited? That part, no. That part would have made no absolute difference whatsoever because it was an, almost but an afterthought. At any point when you're watching this, do you give a response or does John Edwards talk about a response from one dead person and make it seem like it came from another? According to the editing. No, no. Everything was kind of like an afterthought. Things they would, they would add after the fact. Uh, it's it's hard to like, and the uh, the other thing was he was a teacher or an educator. Again, that was my stepfather. I do not. Re- I, they did. They said it was about somebody else. I I, I think it may have been my dad. Man, uh, you go to the dad. All right, hold on. Sure. So, 
he said it about your dad, but it wasn't. It was about your stepdad. Correct. All right, here's what I'm trying to say. He's throwing out a bunch of facts, okay? Mm -hmm. And he's doing it very quickly. And you're trying to put the puzzle together. You're probably thinking, oh, yes, he's, now it's my stepdad. Now it's my uncle. Now it's my, my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like you're working with him on this, whether you want to or not, because you want to believe. Yeah, but I wasn't saying, yes, that's my stepdad at the time. And the fact But that, you're nodding along, right? Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, what he said about my stepdad was true. But he wasn't talking about your stepdad, right? Well, during the actual time he was. I mean, during the actual reading, he was. My stepfather did come through, and he was the one who... Uh, but it but doesn't appear that way on the TV not show. On the, not on the TV show. So but it looks we... like it all is one person. Like he's read one person that came through with all these facts, and you're nodding along. But it was really, if we were watching live, four different type things that they piece together into one. Well, actually, no, no. Actually, on the tape, three people do come through on the tape. Uh, my father, my friend, and my uncle. And that, that remains very clear. But there was one extra person? My stepfather. And they just fit his yes facts yes. into other people? Correct. I got a little problem okay. with that before okay. we even watch. Yeah, but again, it's not going to change the validity or the, no, ac of course the accuracy. The validity. Of <laughs> no, it's so no. valid. It's unbelievable. <laughs> the accuracy right, hold on. is his, still there. Beth uh, believes also. She's like you, Billy. Okay. A lot of people believe mm -hmm. us. Hey, Beth, Beth, you're on Ron and Fez. Hi, Beth. Hi, guys. Card holder 3342. Hoo, 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 hoo. Uh, what can we do for you tonight, sweetie? Well, I went to see him when he was on Maury. And... You were on Maury, too, Billy? Me? No. Well, he was on Maury, and my mother and my sister got red. And my grandmother died from lung cancer, and my sister's been trying to get pregnant. So she told her to quit smoking before she died. And she, so my sister would pretend to smoke. Like, she'd get a straw just so she could sit in the, the cigarette clutch. But she looked like an idiot. But he pointed that out. He's like, who's the one who pretends to smoke? And we, nobody talked about that beforehand. Huh. Pretty creepy. Sounds like this interview should happen at Bellevue. <laughs> you know, uh, the fact that he was on Maury proves to me that it's fake. <laughs> oh, come on now. Why can't you guys just think that there is the possibility? Mm -hmm. That this is legit, that there is something we don't understand, that this guy does have a gift. I mean, it's, it is extremely possible that things are beyond the realm of our... Our what? I don't know, I'm searching for a word there. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding? Understanding, Comprehension? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just mean, Billy. No. Because we just have different feelings. It's, not it's mean. just that we've seen people do this bit before. You haven't seen him do it. I watch the show. Yeah. I think it's a gimmick. Mm -hmm. I think if somebody's coming in, why wouldn't you just say, uh, Fez, is there someone in your mm -hmm. family uh, named Frank? Not yeah. someone going, is there a Fran or a Frank or a, or a Felipe or a Philip? Or, and then finally, Fez finally yells out, Ricky? Yeah. Yes! Yeah. No, see, the way it works, and he explains this on the show, is he does it's not like having a conversation with the dead. It mm -hmm. doesn't come through like we're talking right here. He gets images from the beyond, and his, he, did, he has to interpret the images as best he can based on his life experiences. Like you'll see in the tape, there's a couple of really wacky things that come through that it took me a while to figure out. It's just not like picking up a phone and calling somebody. It's an interpretation involved, too. So when you sat down, um, you know, with the the whole 22 minute thing, the mm -hmm. long version, yeah. did it take him a while to get warmed up, or did he just start throwing stuff out at you immediately? Instantaneous. All right, why don't we take a break? When we come back, we'll play uh, Billy Staples on the John Edwards mm -hmm. show. All right, eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. I see dead people. Who said that? Ron and Fez. All right, Billy is a little... Uh, are you disappointed in this, Billy, that we didn't fall for the gimmick? Are yes. you a little disappointed? Yeah, I'm a little disappointed that you guys don't uh, have a little more faith in me that I'm not a complete idiot. And it's not a gimmick. No, I mean... It's not no, a gimmick. There's a difference between a rube and an idiot. Yeah, uh -huh. you're a rube. No, I I'll tell you the truth, Billy. I think in all your heart, you wanted to believe. You miss your dad. You wanted a goodbye. You didn't get it, right? Your dad died when you were very young. You mm -hmm. were old. Uh, 11. 11. Your dad was how old? 43. All right, so that's tragic. Under any circumstances, mm -hmm. a little 11-year-old boy uh, losing his dad, a 43-year-old man taken from his family at really the prime of his life, tragic. You want some kind of answers. I understand that. No, yeah, but that still doesn't explain, you know, rube, gullible, call it what you want. The, the things that came through without any prior knowledge are unexplainable, Ron. I think you'll feel differently after you listen uh, to the tape. I honestly do. I think you guys open your eyes to see this a little bit more. At what point of the tape? At what point 
did your dad hop into Whoopi Goldberg's body and start to talk to you? When was were you, that? Were you already done with the pottery at that point? Had you finished making that pot and getting clay all over each other? I, I don't recall hearing the Righteous Brothers either. I don't remember any of that coming through or... When he moved a penny across the room. No, I Does... don't recall that either. What about later when he went after the guy who was trying to kill you and started effing with his computers? Uh, no, no, that wasn't there either. <laughs> At any point did anybody say to you, get off my train? <laughs> no, he didn't make it either. He didn't show up. Okay. So I know that you uh, you want to believe this, and I, you know, I'm up for. If it makes you feel better, it's a good thing. Well, right? I do feel better. But about I, it. I just think the guy is, uh, you know, a carny. It's far I think from... it's the beginning of the Wizard of Oz. I think he reached mm. into your bag and he saw that picture of you and Annie M, and he brought it up to you. I think it's great he sent you home. Right. And told you that you could find your bicycle in the Alamo, the basement. <laughs> wow. No, I don't recall that either, Fez, honestly. Uh, I think I would have remembered the Pee Wee reference. <laughs> now, did uh, you, when you started the reading with him, did you immediately say, yes, this guy has nailed it. This guy is talking to my dad. It did not take, a, it, it was very quick. I mean, it was, boom, I was sold. Uh, you know, as soon as I heard... Did you go in skeptical at all or more hopeful, oh, today's the day I finally get some answers? Hopeful? Yes, I mean, I was very hopeful, but yeah, there was a part of me, my logic was saying, was extremely skeptical. You know, like I wanted to believe it was possible, but I went in there saying, you know what, this may not happen for me. But as soon as we sat down and a couple of things came through, I was 100% there. Billy, uh, I got a serious question. Now, did you meet him in a carnival? And he put you in the body of a 30-year-old man, and then you went into a mall and played chopsticks on a large piano? Hmm. That's big. He's doing the thing right. big. No, I don't recall that either, Jeff. Oh, too bad. That was a good movie. All right, Jeff. Jeff, you're on Ron Fest. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Ron. How are you doing? Yeah. Hey, listen, I think we're missing a, a key point here. He said he didn't fill out any paperwork, but, you know, initially he said he sent an email to them saying basically he wanted to contact his dead father of 37 years. I mean, if that's not a tip-off, I'm not sure, you right. know, uh, get him going on the right path. There. Well, that's, that's not a secret. you got to go there wanting to contact right. some dead Right. So person. how hard would it be for him to figure out... Well, you know, all right. Uh, he only knew my first name going in, so right. all these guys who say they nobody had a, n they never knew your last name. No one did. All right, but no one knew staples. nobody part of his staff. All right, no. even if they researched my whole genealogy, my family tree, that would not explain my friend who came through, who would, no one would ever know about, who died like 16 Here's years before this happened. You, Billy, I think that you explain these facts as your friend. I think right. he throws things out there, and you want to believe so much that you start going, "Oh, that's my friend." Oh, the other one's my uncle. Oh, Ron, you're going to be very surprised when you see the specifics he comes through with on my friend. Very, very, you're going to be very surprised. Yeah, I, I think once you get him on the path of generic... Get ready, Ronnie. <laughs> well, I'm going to be freaking out. Thanks, Jeff. Here's uh, KJ. KJ, you're on uh, Ron and Fez. How you doing? KJ. KJ. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Yeah. I got to I gotta say I agree with Billy on this one. Yeah. I don't know, man. Hello. That's it? Well, I've your watched name. The show I'm seeing a, a K years. and I'm seeing a J. What's that? Hello? Yes, explain to us why we should believe. All right. I've watched the show for a few years and I'm a skeptic. Uh huh. All right. But some of the stuff this guy knows is sick. I understand. You got, you're sitting there like, what? I understand. But what if he knew the facts before? What if the tapes have all been edited? Why isn't it a, a, a kind of taped live show? The way they do the Tonight Show or Letterman, why are they taping for three hours for a half hour show? But it was not generic information that he came up with. It wasn't like I think that if you no, guys I, see this, you'll, you know, you'll. I've seen the show before. Oh, you have. And I, I know people who do the same act, probably not as well as he does. No. Uh, and it's, and we know one guy who we know for sure is a fake, mm -hmm. and he's doing the exact same routine. No, he doesn't have the gift. With the, I see, I see a Jim, a John, a Joey. A... No. Right, and then people go, yes, Joey, that's it. Right. And that's probably the extent of it. He keeps fishing and fishing and fishing. John was very specific with the things that he, right, he never said. He never said initial first. He never said more than one name. 
Oh, of course he did. What do you mean, of course? Like, all that's obvious. This, all that sound exactly the same. He goes, I'm seeing a Bob, a Kim, or a Larry. No, no, no. It no, wait, hold on. So if, if Fez runs into somebody and they go to him, uh, yeah, you are Fez, Frank, but he's going to think, this son of a bitch doesn't even know my mm. name. Right. Not somebody that knows them would never do that or remember them. Again, it goes It'd back. be a guy fishing. Again, it goes back to what I said before. The images he gets can be interpreted a number of different ways, and he does the best with what he's seeing in his head, the messages, to right. interpret them to us. Eric, you're on manifest. Hey, hey, Eric. How you doing, man? Yeah. Hey, I think uh, old things, you know, crap. And, uh, yeah, I think you guys are overlooking some. The old episodes are on the Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah. Now, what's the other half of Sci-Fi? Fiction. Fiction. Yeah. That means to me that the whole thing's fake. And plus, where did he get this gift from? Now, where Anybody did he get know? the gift? He was they, born with it. It's not like he can buy it in the store. Well, he's he born probably with dropped it. on his head, and now he's stupid. Nah. All right, he's, well, the guy's you know, not stupid, I no matter what. Hopefully you don't ever lose somebody that you'd like to contact, you know? I mean, and you'd be Billy, running to him in a second. I understand. <laughs> that part is sad. That part is sad. And a lot of us wish we could talk to somebody else. You can. I'm not going to wait three years. All right, uh, I'm going to put Mackenzie on, who uh, has some quotes for us. Mackenzie, you're on a fez. Hi, Mackenzie. Hi. Um, I'm just calling to defend John and Billy. Um, I don't think that John is BS at all. He's the first person that will come out and tell you that he doesn't like to um, have people go through him in order to contact um, their loved ones. He feels that it should have been done while they were still alive, and he also doesn't need to justify himself, whereas other psychics always have to come up with excuses. He's not BS. Like, the stuff that he comes out with... Is I'm glad unreal. he doesn't feel the need to justify himself. By doing a he, syndicated TV show. Right. No, it's not. He, do, he does it because he shows people that, like, there is an afterlife. Well, I mean, for those that actually... But let me explain. If anything happens in a scientific paper, okay, somebody writes a scientific theory, the first thing all the other scientists make him do is justify this. The first thing they do is attack it like they were opposing lawyers to try to figure out why this theory is not true. That's how we get to the end of this. But with this stuff, hey, I don't have to prove it. It just he, is. Well, no, right, no, we no, have he, we have the tape. We'll we'll, we'll all watch it. Okay. Watch because the tape because he'll pull out he'll pull out details that you just sit there yes. and you're like, where did this come from? How would he know that? There's things that people people right, we're gonna watch it, and watch it because all right, we're gonna watch change it. Your mind. Okay. Yeah, right. uh, my mind will be changed. I hope it is, Fuzzy. That would be nice. Be nice to uh, think that this guy's all legit and on the level. I think and that you can uh, go to him and get help. Fezzi, I'm going to say this. He's too legit, too legit to quit. Nice. Hopefully that'll be our attitude after we watch this videotape. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. 877-692-1027. We're Ron Fez. All right, we do have the tape here. Should we just let it run through the first time, please? Can we come back and ask you about it? Yeah, I think that'd be good. This way you can get the, the feel for the whole thing and how quickly when, when, did, when did you have your reading done? You said you were the first ever for this show. It was about two years ago. Okay, about two years ago. Right. Here's uh, Billy on the very first John Edwards crossing over. My name is Billy Hine. My father passed away when I was 11. Uh, he died suddenly of a heart attack when we were on a family camping trip. I never got to say goodbye, and I just hope that today I'll finally be able to put this behind me and get on with the rest of my life. Recently, I sat down to do a one-on-one -on -one session with a man named Billy. He was hoping to connect with a father he lost when he was just a boy. Here's what happened. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is I'm getting a feeling of an older male figure who has crossed over, and that to me would be somebody that I would see as either being father, grandfather, uncle. It's somebody who I would see as being crossed over already. We're not talking about somebody who's here. Tell me about Danny or Denny. Den Danny? DN, Danny Don, Denny. There's like a DN connection that's coming up with this. And he's showing me books and schooling and education. And um, they're asking me, how come you didn't put the flag out? Is it like a family thing that you normally do? No, it's... It's something else. Okay. They just want me to ask you that. I don't know why. I have no idea. I'm just thinking because my world just passed. But they're saying, like, why didn't you put the flag out? Um, again, it's their validation, their way of coming through for you. Okay, now, Kenny, Kevin, Candy, there's some type of K-N or Kristen. It's like a K-N sound. Who is this? <clears throat> that could be my friend who passed. That's, that's what his last name, almost to a T. Okay. I know that police officers carry the badge and the shield. 
somebody's showing me a shield. So they need to acknowledge the shield. So I'm bringing this up for you also. Okay? okay. And I feel like there's some type of connection to either he passed with the impact or that there's something that affected his head where there was something that I would see as either being an explosion or something that affects his... This is an event that causes his passing. It's not exactly um, a healthcare thing from what I'm feeling. And something about sorry not being at the wedding, sorry not being at the event. There's a big festive happy thing that was going on. I'm sorry that I wasn't there for that is kind of what's coming across. I do not get this as being a recent passing. I'm not feeling like he just passed. I feel like I'm gone a while. He's, he's been there for, you know, for a while. Um, and he's telling me to go back to 1984. I don't know what happened in 1984. Was he still here then? It was just about the time of his passing. Okay, he's taking me back to around 1984. He's also indicating Wayne Newton. To me, I, they want me to say the name Wayne, they want me to say the name Newton, or you've got some type of inside joke going on here with Wayne Newton, but I have no idea what this means. Now, who's the fireman with all the smoke? Who had all the... Oh, my God. My uncle. Passed? Yeah. Okay, he's here. He's telling him to call him Smokey. He's got, like, all the smoke all around him, and he's oh making like, this God. is how he passes. Does he know your mom? Yeah. He's telling me to say hi to mom. Is that your mom's brother-in-law? Uh, yeah. Okay, it's like your mom's sister's husband? How is this connected? My, my, my father's sister's husband. So okay. it's a brother-in-law. All right, because he's telling me that he... My sister's husband. That's right. how he's come across to me, which takes a lot of energy. And he's calling out to Lenny. Lindy. Lin, Lenny. There's an L. Yeah. There's like an L connection that he's telling me to acknowledge. Also, like to drink a bit from what he's showing me. Um, but enjoyed life. I feel like he enjoyed life while he's here. And he's telling me that you're not here for him, but he had to jump in and say hi. This is kind of like what he wanted to do. Um, wait, wait a second. Who's the Nancy or the N N Ann? Not Ann. It's like. Mm. Next, my wife's mother's name is Nancy. Okay. She's not passed. That's okay. That's just their way of telling me where we're at. Okay. Their way of like saying, let, let, let us all straight. So I have somebody, whether it be a younger male, a cousin, or somebody also in, in her family who's trying to come through um, and acknowledge. They're talking about somebody either planning a trip now, going to either the Caribbean, Florida, or something that's coming up down south. I'm going to say that this is Florida, and I'm going to say it's Disney World, because they're giving me this feeling of I'm going by where the mouse is. I'm going with the ears. I'm being dropped down there, and I'm seeing something that would be upstate, out of state, not in the city area from what they're showing me. Mm -hmm. They got green and trees all around this. Oh, yeah. They're trying to show me a house with a porch where there's like two or three steps going up and either the second step or one of the steps are broken or the wood's off or it's splintered and they're telling me to tease you about when is this going to be fixed or when are we going to fix this. So I don't know if your wife is saying fix this, this needs to be painted, this needs to be sanded and then we can tease her about the tree of the plant dying. There's something about the tree of the plant being dead. That's how they're, how they're coming across. I tease her about that all the time. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. We're Ron Fez. Billy was pleased that his dad came through, but a little surprised when an old friend came through. Also, here's what he had to say to our producers after the show. My experience today was amazing. Um, more came through than I ever imagined. The old man with the flag at my father's funeral. Um, the, it was a military funeral, and at the flag off my father's casket, they came over and they handed it to me. And I have never opened it or done anything with it since, and I still have it folded up in my closet. But the young man in the car accident to shield was my best friend, Glenn. He died in a terrible car crash going to work one night. Um, it was alcohol related, it was a big explosion. He was a police officer, and uh, he was my best friend for a long, long time. The hit with Disneyland was, he sold my mouse. That's where my wife and I, we went on our honeymoon. Linda and I don't have any children, so I tease her about, you know, the plants dying. I was like, how can you want to have kids? You can't even keep a plant alive. <laughs> I don't understand about Wayne Newton. Uh, I'm going to try and find out, but I have no idea. As with all sessions, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one or in the gallery, not everything I say makes sense all the time. Sometimes I misinterpret, and I know that that Wayne Newton reference has something to do with his family, and I just don't know when it's going to come out, but hopefully Billy will call us when he figures it out. All right. Billy Staples on the John Edwards Show crossing over. What a fast-talking bastard. I was trying to take uh, notes there, because I could barely keep up. It was very hard, because he's, like I said, he's gazing off into another place, talking a mile a minute. And here's the... Okay, another place, because he's so far above us. He's <laughs> in another dimension. Billy, you went there to talk to your dad, right? Correct. What possible information did you get from your dad before Smokey and your, and your well, friend and everybody else came hopping? And Wayne Newton. To begin you got nothing. To begin with, he said my dad's name. Right? He's no, a, no, no, no. You went there to talk with your dad, right? Right, but by him saying that, my dad's name acknowledged that my father was there. Okay, and, and, hold on. Okay. You never got to, he never gave you anything from your dad? Yeah, about the flag. The flag, and that was it? 
That's plenty. That is all your father's worried about on the other side? No, he told Where's me... the he flag? Just, he told me it was okay about the flag. Telling me it was all right that I never put it out, I never used it for anything, that I still have it folded in the triangle from the day I got it at the funeral. That's he, what everybody does. You, no, I, the flag we had in the office was from my grandmother. That's been opened up and stuff. I just felt it, would, it was that wrong to open it up and, and use it for anything. Uh, it's, it's always been all right, folded but So up. that was the big information from your dad before all these other people can pop it in. Ron, if He's I got to... nothing else to say, say to you after 30 years. You know, again, it's like just the fact that that came through is enough. Just the fact that my dad was there and said, uh, sent a message to me about the flag. What's he going to say? You know, hey, I'm glad you, you know, glad you're doing comedy. Said, no. It yes, was that would have been great. I would have enjoyed that. It doesn't information. work. It's not a conversation like picking up and dialing. This is something that was very important. This was handed to me and as an 11-year-old boy, a flag at All his right, father's funeral. All right, but that's it. After 30, let me tell you. Let's suppose your dad actually went out to see it. They can come back for 37 years. And the first thing he brings up is the damn flag. You're going to be saying, you know something, I got kids, I'm married, I got all this other stuff. You're still bringing up the damn flag to me after all this time. No. Anything. I mean, that, that was probably one of the, the most sentimental things, you know, going back to the funeral, and you I get, guess. And you went there to talk to your dad, mm -hmm. right? And he knows it. Then f right off the bat, he's like, there's an older male. Right, he yelled out, grandfather, uncle. Father. There's a father figure. And you've already emailed that you wanted to contact your father. Correct, but I so emailed he knows the producers. The, he knows... The right, he doesn't talk to his producers. No. Well, we don't. No. He may have us there. But seriously, I mean, if Jeremy has information, he doesn't give it to us. Because we're in two different worlds. Again, there was no fact sheet filled out. All I mentioned was I wanted to contact my father, didn't give a name. Didn't and then right up, but, but his first thing with you was, I see a father figure. Mm -hmm. A father, an uncle, a grandfather. And at that point, you started crying. Well, pretty close. Yeah, I was definitely... Uh, believe up. it. And you were believing at that point. Of course I was believing at that point. How would he know about the flag? Even if they researched my family and found out my dad's name and how he died and everything else, how would they know that the flag is still in my closet and I never opened it up? All right, Ronnie. I don't remember him saying that the, you never opened up the flag. You're saying that. No, he told me that the message was, it's okay about the flag. That's it? Yeah, that's plenty. What, of all the things for him to come up with about a dead father, you think, how would he know that there was, even, there was a flag involved in a military funeral? Ronnie, ask me about my father and say, is there a flag? Uh, all right, uh, your dad, there's something about a flag, Fez? Yes, every Sunday he puts out a buccaneer flag out in front of the house. And uh, he lost one one time, putting it on the side of the car driving to the stadium. Uh, ask me about the flag, Fez. Uh, Ron, yeah. um, I believe I'm getting a father figure, says something about a flag. Oh, my God, he gave me an early American flag that was a Bennington flag. And I uh, had it at one time, and I put it in storage, and I don't know where it is now. Everyone Everybody has a flag gets story. A flag. That's ridiculous. This is the flag for well, my father's funeral. Right, but this mine would be just as important. Oh, well, mine a, isn't a family flag. A buccaneer flag? That's To their family, they go to the buccaneer games every Sunday. You what know, we're trying to say is you can you make anybody... Father, if you knew my father, <laughs> he bleeds pewter. Okay. Oh. But that was probably one of the best things just to mention. You and know, you think, how many, how many Americans do you think are buried with a flag? How many guys is, were in the service? All veterans. Right. So that's what I'm trying to say. So who's to, to say that my dad, how, do we, how would he even know my dad was a veteran? There's a good shot there. That's if, all I'm saying. If your dad died 30 years ago, there's a good chance that he had some sort of military service. And there's also a good chance that he wasn't in the military. You know, right, uh, and the guy's talking so quick, he'd have moved on. Other things came up, like Wayne Newton. That meant nothing to you. At but the But that's time. not... St at the time, does it now? Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, it happens... I'm not so even going to ask. Again, it happens so quickly, guys. You Actually, after it's over, your mind is spinning so much with information. Okay. It takes yeah, I know. Mine is just from hearing the thing. You know, you misinformation. Talk... My mind is spinning with misinformation. Good. My father came through to me and talked about a flag, and it's like it, it, minimizing that is it's, it's actually hurtful. Well, in your dream the other night, did he bring up the flag again? No, he talked to me about being dead. Right. <laughs> he started making sense to you in your dream, right? But again, Not constantly harping on that damn flag. <laughs> again, my father's completely. <laughs> My father's come through to me twice in dreams, um, and only since this reading. Never before that. And with Nate, uh, with um, Wayne Newton? No, Wayne Newton was not there. Wayne, Wayne Newton's still alive. Oh, All right, hold cool. on. Here's uh, Bill. Bill, you're on our run of Fez. Hi, Bill. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, buddy. 
Yeah, I, w- I want to ask Billy Staples a question. Yeah. Billy, when you're at, like, at the carnival, right? Mm-hmm. And a guy says, uh, I'll guess you wait for two bucks. And if I'm wrong, I'll give you this nice, fine mug here. Now, and you sit on the scale, and he guesses you wait, and he's wrong. And you, you win the mug, and you walk away saying, Geez, I feel real good. I won the mug. The guy was wrong. I beat. I won. Yeah, but actually, all the guy's doing is selling mugs. Right. He's not Overpriced away. mugs. I did the same thing in the carnival. Spin and win whatever it stops on is what you get bear dog every time. Everybody left with a bear dog. And they all, good. Everybody thought they were a winner. Woo. And we used to get those dogs for like $7 a gross. You'd be lucky if by the time you got to the uh, end of the midway that it just didn't come apart in your hand. The difference is that guy is a hack and a phony. That's the whole thing, and everyone knows that going in. If he does guess your weight, it's just a lucky guess. Can I tell you something? Very few people know that it's a hack and a phony. I don't buy that. You're going to say some guy sitting there with two teeth is going to have the ability to guess your weight and when you were born. What we're saying is, way to be no, easier. but you still win. He wins. He got your money. So he won right from the start. It's not the same. Uh, here's Michael. Michael, you're on our run fest. Hi, Michael. Yeah, hey, how are you guys doing? Yeah. Hey, um, uh, for the military funerals, one, you can research any military funeral, go back and find out who had a military funeral. Second thing, all military funerals, they give a flag out. They probably asked his mom, you know, who wants the flag, and she said, give it to my son. Yeah, they always so that's give how it they to can you. know that, he, uh, that the flag was involved. You, you, that, yeah, but you don't have to have a military funeral to get a flag. No, but, I mean, you can research. If You, you can research a military funeral, though. So that's probably how they knew about it. As long as you were a vet, you can receive a flag. Exactly. All right, thanks, Michael. Thank you. Bye. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. Let's take a break. We'll come back and listen to it again, and we'll and we'll stop it from time to time. Sure not. Also, your wife wants to be on the show, and uh, well, she was there with me. So if there's anything right. uh, I was forgetting, or she can alight, and she might remember. We'll, something we'll talk know. to your wife, and then later your son Bart, and we'll get the mm-hmm. whole family. Fa- oh wait, that's a different. <laughs> that's that's that a is. different show. <laughs> it is. It's on earlier. Right. Eight seven seven six nine two one zero two seven. We're on a fez. All right, we're going over this thing with uh, our own Billy Staples has done this John Edwards show. Went there hoping to contact his father who passed away 30 years ago. Billy says his father came through along with some other dearly departed from Billy's life. We listened to the entire interview. Now what we'd like to do is just go back and check a few things. Billy, you don't mind. I mean, you're, you're very gung-ho about this. You absolutely believe you were contacted through John Edwards. Oh, yeah, and I welcome the opportunity to explain it. I, I, All right, I'm and so you don't mind if Ronnie and I are a little skeptical here and try to point out some things along the way. Go, go right ahead. All right, why don't we uh, play the tape now? Okay. And try to stop it from time to time, because this guy talks so fast, Fuzzy. Yeah. And about nothing that... After a while, it's just words slapping around. Right. That's that's one of the points right from the get. He's throwing out so much information that isn't it very likely something's going to connect if you're throwing out that right. many pieces of info? Especially if you want to believe. Right. Yeah, but you would normally throw out generic stuff. What he came out with was extremely specific. All right. Let's, uh, let's start and go through it. All right. We'll start here, right here at the beginning. My name is Billy Hine. My father passed away when I was 11. Uh, he died suddenly. All right, right away, Billy. You acting like you can't believe he, he found your dad. You're letting everybody know that you're looking to talk to your dad. All right, let's keep okay. going. I suddenly have a heart attack when we were on a family camping trip. I never got to say goodbye, and I just hope that today I'll finally be able to put this behind me and get on with the rest of my life. Recently, I sat down to do a one-on-one session with a man named Billy. He was hoping to connect with the father he lost when he was just a boy. Here's what happened. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is I'm getting a feeling of an older male figure who has crossed over, and that to me would be something that I would see. All right. All right, now don't you think that I would be able to do that if I knew you were looking to talk to your father? Yeah, you could say I'm, I'm seeing a male father figure. Of course Old, you could. Yeah. All an right, older so the, male figure. Again, that is the only information he had going in. All right? Uh, but, if you want to sit there and say, yeah, you know, this could be a setup. And just, like, just so yeah. you know. You gasped when he said that. <laughs> you literally gasped, and the tears are all welled up. And, but, oh. 
But here's well, the I, thing. Why does he have to do that if he knows you're there? You volunteered the information. You'd like to speak to your dad. Mm -hmm. Find it. Make, get some closure. Why does he have to start it out with older male figure? Because that's Why what he's can't he say, I'm seeing your father? Because this is what he's getting. What happens is if it appears above me, it's an older figure, a father or grandfather. If it appears above my head, and if it appears to the side, it's people my same age. And if it appears below me, it's a child or someone younger. Than below me is right. Oh. Below me <laughs> is what I would have said to him. So it's not a specific... Below me. Look there. Yeah. Below me, below all of us. <laughs> so you're, you're getting the impression again, and I can't... And then when you're done, below yourself, pal, because I ain't buying. I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> Do you think everything's coming through specifically crystal clear? It's not. It's images. And the images that he was seeing were above me, so it's an older figure. All right. Okay, so he great. actually saw... All right, now, all right, let me ask this then. If he's seeing an image of your father, right? But he sees an image, not of my father, something that he can relate to. Maybe he'll see his grandfather or his father. That's the image that he sees in his head. Okay, because my point is, is, if he's seeing an older male figure... Your father's not an older male figure to you anymore. You're the same age. Yeah, but in relationship to me, it is. All right. It would be an older male. Okay. Here we go. More John Edwards and Billy Staples. Feeling of an older male figure who has crossed over, and that to me would be something that I would see as either being father, grandfather, uncle. It's somebody who I would see as being crossed over already. We're not talking about somebody who's here. Tell me about Danny or Denny. Den Danny? DN. Danny, Don, Denny. There's like a DN connection that's coming up with this. And all right, another gasp. Four <laughs> names into this thing, you gasp. First off, my father's name was Don, Donaldheim, right? Okay, so... Uh, what do people call him? Don. All right. They well, never called him Danny or Denny? No. Okay. <laughs> or Den. At one point, the man just yelled out, Den. <laughs> I see him in the den. Put it this way, every word, every name he came was... out with sounded very similar, the D-N sound. So, I mean, come on, he didn't throw in a Jimmy or a Louie in there. All right, Ronnie, is there a Denny, a Danny, or a Don in your life? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. But is it your father who you were looking to contact? No, but it's a father figure. Ugh. I have an uncle, a, Don. Okay, so only, nothing would have meant anything to you unless it was your dad, right? No, uh, with what you'll hear later, a lot of it would have meant something to me. But exactly, but most. look, he just said, is there a, do you have a, a Danny or a Don in your life? Yes, I do. All right, let's keep moving. All right. Danny, Don, Denny. There's like a DN connection that's coming up with this. And he's showing me books and schooling and education. And All right, let's stop there. Stop what's, right the, there. what's the books and schooling and education? Yeah, because I missed that completely the first time. That was time. my stepfather. That's where they edited. They added that in for some, un which makes absolutely no sense. It doesn't add anything to the reading. But that was regarding my stepfather, who was a teacher. Okay. All right, so that's a... So that's, that, now, that's a problem reason, for me. For yeah, some it, reason, that's a man who claims to be on the level right. and yet is using creative editing to make it look like he's getting more information about your dad than he actually has. Okay, again, in production... Now, wait a minute, I see books, uh, desk. Fez, did your dad go to school at one point? Yes, he did. That'll be six hundred dollars, please, and another hundred for the hawk. That's seven hundred. Now we are running hawk, a special. Hawk, you're gonna have to go home. Now we are running a special over Christmas time. <laughs> All right. So right away you said there's creative editing. Yes, but my stepfather did no, come no, no, through. No, 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 no. I got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I got a problem that they would fake anything. It wasn't fake. It wasn't fake. It did happen. It did occur. They it's just for some anytime reason. Anytime you uh, do something weird with the editing, that's fake. Um, again, I leave that to the production. It's, with it's like the sci Mark you know. Burnett from Survivor, mm -hmm. the last time in Australia. He went and reshot things using extras posing as the castaways. You know, and people are going, all right, what's the deal? Mm -hmm. You know, and he goes, oh, it was just for production value. Because, Billy, it's just a show. That's the <laughs> point. It's about because it's a show. All right, so let's see. Where he's already faking us 14 seconds into this thing. Right. All right, let's, let's go on now. Schooling and education. And um, they're asking me, how come you didn't put the flag out? All right, hold on. Why are they asking? Because there's more than one person there. Who is it? All the people. They all, it's not like, you know, one person who comes in. So the, all the, the dead relatives and friends who were coming All right, so your dad is hanging around with your stepdad in heaven? Ew! No, these are the messages that are getting coming from the beyond to John. It's not like it's like one person comes in and you got a dead person waiting when the next guy comes in right after him. That's all coming at once. He's getting bombarded with images. All right, so the big point that you haven't seen your dad in, what, 37 years or something? 30, 30? Well, it's 1969, 32 years. All right, 32 years. All he cares about is this damn flag. 
That's a very important part. That's of my a life. keepsake. It's a keepsake. I agree. There was no reason for you to hang that flag up. I would have thought it was weird if you did. What would you? What would you? What would he have had to have said, or my dad would have had to have said to convince you guys? Just the fact that this is something that came from his funeral when I was, you know, when I was very young and it meant a lot to me. Right. And it still means a lot to me. One of the last things I have from my father. What, yeah, what, what if he said something about the day he died? That's where you feel any sort of guilt. The fact that you weren't there. You were never they, guilty about the flag. No. But I did. He did come to me in the dream and explain to me a little. But no, about this stuff. happened years later. We're talking about you yeah. and John Edwards. Yeah. You know, Why didn't he say something about what you really needed? If he's there and he's there to speak to you, I mean, don't you think something about? That are you talking camping? about Don or Denny? Don, Don the dad. But Fez, that didn't he was take you I to needed. Denny's? Maybe that's what that was all about. No, we never. Went you to guys Denny's. used to go to Denny's a lot. <laughs> Back then, it was called Sambo's. <laughs> You know, but that was what I needed, though, Fez. All that right, hit a chord with me. Right, okay. I mean, okay. All right, all right, all right but we explained the whole flag thing last spring. And um, they're asking me how come you didn't put the flag out. <laughs> is it like a family thing that you normally do? No, it's, it's I, something else. What, what is something else? <laughs> and the tears, as you can hear, audience, are just flowing at this point. Let me ask you this. Sure. If he would have asked you for oral at that second when you gave it to him. Of course not. All right. You're not I disagree. below him. That's the only thing so far that I do believe, <laughs> that you would have gave him oral. <laughs> Nothing else makes sense to me. All right. All right. We continue. Mm -hmm. Billy Staples being interviewed by John Edwards. No, it's it's something else. Okay. They just want me to ask you that. I don't know why. I have no idea. I'm just thinking because my world is just passed. But they're saying, like, why didn't you put the flag out? Um, again, it's their validation, their way of coming through for you. Okay, now, Kenny, Kevin, Candy, there's some type of K-N. All right, let's stop there. Okay. You dad, you want to talk to your dad. Mm -hmm. Suddenly somebody else comes in, you get one thing, the flag, and that's it. But I get other messages later on that are not so clear who they're coming from. But this one... All right, but here I would say this: everyone but my dad, please shut up. It's not like you can call the shots, you know. It's like, it's <laughs> Obviously, I mean, it's like all of a sudden you got people coming through. I've never contacted my dead friends and relatives before. Can I tell you what he did there, though? What's that? Listen to the names that he did. Is there a Kenny, Candy, Kevin, Kirsten, or Kristen? All K Ns. Yes, but he did man, woman, man, woman. I right. mean, you could get any sort of ka name, male or female, out now, of that. And let me ask you this. Who doesn't know a Kevin or a Kenny? I do. I do. Me too. I know Kevin or Kenny yeah. also. But this was uh, my friend's last name. What Where's is what? you? Can you say that? Sure. Kineski. <laughs> Wait that, a do minute. You, do you realize that that's nowhere near candy? It said the KN sound. Oh, God, Billy. Wait, Billy. wait, wait. When you hear the rest, it'll all make a perfect picture. It'll wait all wrap minute. up and you'll... He says you. Do you know a Kenny? You start crying, sobbing. Yes, I do. That... Kineski. Yeah, don't you understand? This was a shock for me. I didn't expect that this for Glenn, my my buddy Glenn Kineski, to come through. I didn't. Sort of... uh, he didn't. Kevin and Kirsten did. Do you do you know a Candy? Yes, Alan Kowicki. He passed away. It's Alan Kowicki, the NASCAR driver. He didn't even guess the name, and you're agreeing. Huh, I don't. Th again, you guys are making it seem like it comes through clear as a bell. But, but it's an you interpretation. You told him, yes, that's his last name. I said it's very close to his last name. It's almost his last name. Exactly, you said. The first three letters of his last name were you, K-O-N. You said that's almost his last name exactly. Okay, I don't recall exactly what I said. Yes, you did. <laughs> Okay, so if I said it, I said it. I'm <laughs> glad we stopped this, because I thought it was your friend Kenny. Right. No, it was my friend Glenn Kinesky. No, it was Alan Kowicki. All right. Wait, listen to the rest of what happens here. And I'm I can sure barely, I, can, I don't know if I can bear it. Listen to how he throws out so many different ka names, names that begin with ka. Okay, now, Kenny, Kevin, Candy, there's some type of K-N or Kristen. This Male and female. Who's this? <clears throat> that could be my friend who passed. That was his last name, almost to a T. Okay, to I know that police officers carry the badge and the shield. Somebody's showing me a shield. So they need to acknowledge the shield. So I'm bringing this up for you also, okay? okay. All right, hold on. Yeah. Was it a gladiator? <laughs> he said a police officer. He didn't say a gladiator. You know, just because he had a shield, it wasn't a... Is there a... a do you know a Captain America? No. Or a Kenny or now Kirsten you, America? Now you make it fun. A Kenny Maximus? No. My friend who passed was a police officer in New York City. 
And, again, how could you explain that? I mean, where, of all the people I would know, you probably the last person you would ever think of to have a police friend. I mean, come on. How, right, like, I don't hear you explaining that right, one away. How, but, the I, fact that you saw a police shield for uh, this guy. He didn't say police shield, did yeah. he? Yeah. He said any kind of... Uh, he said he's showing a police shield. Am I correct? No, let, let's go back and hear it again. If he did, I missed it. Okay. All right. Take us back there. Thank you. I know that police officers carry the badge and the shield. Somebody's showing me a shield. So they need to acknowledge the shield. So I'm bringing this up for you also. Okay? okay. And I feel like there's some type of connection to either he passed with the impact or that there's something that affected his head where there was something that I would see as either being an explosion or something that affects his... This is an event that causes his passing. It's not exactly um, a healthcare thing from what I'm feeling. Okay. So the fact that you've already nodded to him being a policeman... Mm hmm then he goes, and it's a friend, so he's died young. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's very likely that there's going to be, he says, impact. Okay. Right. He's which could cover, you know, a gunshot, anything. Accident. Uh, didn't he say a fiery explosion, too? All right, let's move on. Oh, but my friend died in a car crash on his way home from work one night, uh, from the, getting off uh, from... Uh -huh. Being a police officer, he got into a car accident. It was a big explosion. He was killed. I'm sorry that happened. Yeah, that's I'm awful. Sorry. I am too. But I mean, just okay with that knowledge now. Listening to that, it's All not right. so easy to debunk. I, yes, but, it's easy to debunk. All right, what does he? What's uh, Kenny say to you here? What do you get from him? He comes and he says he's uh, he's sorry he missed the wedding. I believe he says. All right, so you got married how long after? Seven years. Okay. And that's all he's bringing up. To he one just day. missed it. No, he brings up the Wayne Newton. <sighs> All right, let's hear it. And something about sorry not being at the wedding, sorry not being at the event. There's a big festive, happy thing that was going on. I'm sorry that I wasn't there for that is kind of what's coming across. I do not get this as being a recent passing. I'm not feeling like he just passed. I feel like I'm gone a while. He's, he's been there for, a, you know, for a while. Um, and he's telling me to go back to 1984. I don't know what happened in 1984. Was he still here then? It was just about the time of his passing. Okay, mm -hmm. here's the situation. He says, I don't think this is a recent passing. You volunteer with your nods. You're right. It's not a recent passing. Yeah. I could yell back 15 years and say 1984. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course that's going to be. Was that the year? Very close to it. That was about the time we. And again, one of the things. That what didn't year make was it? I mean, you know, if it wasn't the exact year. Well, that was when we used to hang out together, '84, and he died right after we. We used to. Okay, one of the things that did not make the tape. Um, okay, he says I'm seeing also connection between you two with initials. I'm seeing you guys at a flock of seagulls show. Am I, <laughs> am I wrong about that? Did Kachi Gugu open for that one? Yeah. Cool. And he goes, I see you above him in some kind of capacity. We used to oh, that's <laughs> disgusting. We used to work at HFC, and I was his boss. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right, let's uh, keep going. All right. I don't know what happened in 1984. Was he still here then? It was just about the time of his passing. Okay, he's taking me back to around 1984. All right, I'll tell you what happened in 1984. Uh, a band called Frankie uh, went, goes to Hollywood, stormed the States, and made mm -hmm. us all dance again. Relax. That's what happened. Don't do it. Right. Right. When you want to get to it. Okay. Maybe that's it. Is there a Frankie, a Freddie, a Frida? Okay, he's taking me back to around 1984. He's also indicating Wayne Newton. <laughs> to me, I, they want me to say the name Wayne. They want me to say the name Newton. Or you've got some type of inside joke going on here with Wayne Newton. But Okay, right there. Now, at the time you said that made no connection to you, right? Actually, Wayne Newton came through two different times during the reading. Yeah. And he goes, this was very important. Regarding both with this. your friend, Glenn? Yeah, both with my friend, Glenn. Let me ask you this. When did that uh, movie come out with this song? Ferris Bueller? Yeah. That's got to be around 1984. Maybe that's what he meant. You guys went to see this together? No, never saw it together. We used to drink a lot together. No, you? Yeah. I'm shocked. And the whole Wayne Newton thing, uh, after giving a little thought, I actually called the producers back the next day when I figured it out. Hoping that you could once again get on the show. No, just the, they say at the end of the show, if you know what it is, call us back, and they'll sometimes talk about it. It was one of the things that I used to do when I was drinking beer and stuff. I would eat Fig Newtons. And he used to always make fun of me for that, call me like a jerk and stuff that's disgusting. And then he got into it. We used to drink beer and eat Fig Newtons together all the time. Whenever we went out partying together. Wow. Now, you know, I don't know what's sadder. Is it? You lost a friend or that you lived a life like this? 
Or that you think of Fig Newton as Wayne Newton, the entertainer. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, I used to call uh, I used to call Wayne Newton Fig Newton when you he used to be on the Merv Griffin show. Out of your way, out of oh, your way my to God. prove this carny correct. Oh, uh, Billy, there's some straw. Could you grasp it for me? Come on. Then another yeah. thing, if I ever get into court, don't you be on my side. Why, because I believe in things? I believe I would believe in you as much as I believe in this. Please don't. I'm begging you not Your to. Your Honor, I believe in him. Don't they? We would eat fig newtons handfuls at a time. Well, we got to take a break. We'll be back right. with more of this. Billy, I'll say this. you got a heart of gold. Thank you. The head needs some work, but you got a heart of gold. And I hope you come back to visit me sometime. All right, Dan from Hoboken says, Beer and Fig Newtons. Did John Edwards predict the stomach stapling, too? <laughs> he actually did say something at the very end. He goes, you're sure. about to make a big decision. Yeah, we were all thinking with that. 877-692-1027, Ron and Fez Show. Billy Staples is a believer. We're Ron and Fez. Talking to Billy Staples tonight about his experience with John Edwards. You know him, of course, from the Crossing Over Show. All right, how much more is on here on this tape we've been going through? One more minute. All right, let's give it a... Fezzy and I, I, I got to tell you, Billy, we're a little bit skeptical. Well, you know, I wish I could change your minds, but I don't think you guys are going to believe no matter what you heard. So uh, you had your minds well, made up. We just, we're, what we're doing is we're going through the tape bit by bit, stopping it, stopping the interview that we watched with you, and just pointing out how someone can pull these things off. Right. I know you're absolutely amazed, and you're like, where could he get that from? We're just trying to show you some of the ways he could get that. All right, can I? But you know what? I'll tell you something else. I've seen coin tricks that I, don't, I can't figure it out, but I know it's a trick. Okay. Well, see, that's the difference. I know this wasn't a trick, or I don't believe in my heart and soul that this was a trick. I mean, like, just okay, let, me, let me ask you a question. I mean, how would the police shield come up regarding my friend? I mean, I mean that's. All right, let's move on though. Okay, okay I'm just... bring up the police shield constantly. Well, it's uh, I haven't, yeah, it hasn't been explained away. That's the only reason I bring it up. All right, so you want us to explain it away? That's what you want with us? Well, no, it's just that I would like to, you know, there's other stuff that you is easily, <coughs> you can easily. All right, let's let's get into this. Though. Sure, no let's problem. Let's keep the show moving. Along. No problem. All right, here's more of Billy on John Edwards. To me, I, they want me to say the name Wayne, they want me to say the name Newton, yeah, or you've Wayne got some Newton. type of inside joke going on here with Wayne Newton, but I have no idea what this means. Now, who's the fireman with all the smoke? Who had all the... Oh, my God. My uncle. Passed? Yeah. Okay, he's here. He's telling him to call him Smokey. He's got, like, all the smoke. All right, hold on. <laughs> he's Your uncle what? the fireman. Correct. Was his nickname Smokey? Not that I'm aware of. All right, so why do you think he said call him Smokey? Well, it could have been his nickname at the firehouse or something. He lived there. Right. All... I'm sure that would be like me calling Fez Jokey. All right, Ron, but let me explain. This is an uncle that lives. And my friend, Radio E. Hi, Radio E. Hi, oh, Jokey. All right, I see, see how a little I see sense your point. that guys at a firehouse ain't going to call each other Smokey. Hey, microphone how you doing? Hey, helmet head. You putting that helmet on your head again? Hey, heat miser. What's going down? Where's a uh, big truck guy? Hey, hey, big rubber boots. Hey, is, uh, boy. What time siren is coming in today? Full slider. <laughs> What's the hat? <laughs> Again, he lived very far away. Um, Who, Smokey? My uncle, my <laughs> uncle Laurie. Laurie? Yeah, the shot for Lawrence. They used to call him Laurie. I'd rather go with Smokey. I would name. definitely want Smokey if I was a man <laughs> and my name was Laurie. By the way, a cop was here. I don't know if you know him. Shooty? Uh, <laughs> oh, I know him. He's a friend of Tickety. Yeah. He came in with Badgie. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, it's a crazy night. It's a crazy night. I went to my baker. Breddy? Oh, yeah. He's nice. You know who introduced him uh, to me? Who's that? My tailor. Zoe. All right, let's get back to Smokey. That's not his name, right? Again, I don't know. It very well Here's possibly could be. Uh, uh, you're from Long Island. Correct. You know, cops and firemen. Yeah, right? this, this fireman lived north of Buffalo, just north right, Canada. But, but I'm just saying how the guy's fishing. Okay, you're but friends it, with cops, you might be friends with firemen. Let's right. get into this. All right. And now, did your grand, uh, your, your uncle, did he die in a fire? No, he did not. All right. So you see, this guy's seen him surrounded by smoke. Again, it comes as an image. Could this it be the a... Uncle Nature Boy? Woo! Do you know a 13-time champion? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Belty. Championship Belty. All right. All right, let's get back into it. Here's more of Billy Staples on John Edwards. Passed. Yeah. Okay, he's here. He's telling him to call him Smokey. He's got, like, all this smoke all around him, and he's oh making, like, this God. is how he passes. Does he know your mom? Yeah. He's telling me to say hi to him. Now, you just, he just said to you, this is how he passes. He's surrounded by smoke. And you just told us that's not how he died. Why didn't you correct him on this? Well, because, again, it happens very quickly at the time. No, right, no, the no, guy's no, going like a bat out of hell. Yeah. You're sitting there nodding on the tape. Right, and that's all it was like. At the time, they said, just answer yes or no, and that was it. And <laughs> then... That would have been time for a no. No. <laughs> well, or uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Smoky. No, come on. It, again, I'm trying it's to. An it comes through in images, not in like direct quotes saying, hey, this is my Uncle Larry from uh, uh, Falconer, New York, you know. Watch your language. Yeah, please. All right, let's go. Yeah. He's telling me to say hi to mom. Is that your mom's brother in law? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's like your mom's sister's husband. How is this connected? My, my, <laughs> my. <f> Why is <laughs> You just said brother in law. Uh, yeah. How is this connected? Well, there are many different ways of being a brother-in-law. Why does he care? <laughs> just to, he's just showing that he's right on the money. And he, this, is he, not. he is not. He is. Smokey. He died in smoke, and he didn't, right? No, he did not die in smoke. How did that, he die? That I'm aware of. I really don't know. Did he smoke too much? Oh, you yeah, don't he know was a how he smoker. died. <laughs> you don't know how he died. And now yet he's I'm doing and... it to you. Yeah. You see, look, I have found a way for you to rationalize the smoking. No. Did he smoke a lot? Yes. <gasps> That's just it. It's just, it fits in, Fez. Yes. Well, let's go. And it's I'm not ridiculous. getting 600 bucks an hour. Okay, it's like your mom's sister's husband. How is this connected? My 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 father's sister's husband. So okay. it's a brother-in-law. All right, because he's telling me that he... All right, so I he, went, he screwed mom. that up. No, he said brother-in-law. He said, then he got how they were connected wrong. He said, it's your sister's husband or your mother's. Uh, but again, he was right there. He called it a brother in law. <sighs> Let's go. I need to acknowledge to mom that he's the sister's husband. That's right. how he's come across to me, which takes a lot of energy. And he's calling out to Lenny. Lindy. Lin Lenny. There's an L. Yeah. There's like an L connection that he's telling uh, me to acknowledge. That? Linda, my wife. How does he know her? From being married to me. You mean very close? No. No. Um, all right. Bill he's me. been to Linda. He's been to Lindy's? <laughs> yeah, Delicious. Yeah, the, love the cheesecake. Now, why would an uncle that you barely know, you don't even know how he died, why would he call out to your wife? Uh, I your think, second wife. I think because he never met her. <laughs> <laughs> he, ne he never met her. Why did he call out Al Dukes' name? He hasn't met a lot of people. But he knew about her. He never got a chance to meet her before <sighs> he, she, he passed. How did he pass again in the Ring of Fire? I'm sure there's someone Smoking. named Ching Li in China he's never met either. Why didn't they get a shout out from the beyond? Because I'm not married to Ching Li. <laughs> Anymore. Uh, that was the first <laughs> wife. <laughs> yeah. There's like an L connection that he's telling me to acknowledge. Also like to drink a bit from what he's showing me. Um, uh, he was a big drinker? No, that's an edit. That goes back again to the stepfather. <laughs> oh, the stepfather who... Now, all right, so we've never, on this tape, we've never acknowledged that you got contacted by a stepfather. But yet they've used the thing with the books, yeah, and the education, and now the drinking to make it sound like he has more information about two other spirits. I think it was more of just filling up time. This thing is F. <laughs> you had 20 minutes, and they're cutting it to seven. And Why they, did you need more time? And if the guy wants to fill up time, tell him to pause every once in a while <laughs> so we can understand what the F Mr. Coke Motormouth is talking about. Well, one of the things that John did say, he goes, um, you didn't come here to see him, but he just wanted to acknowledge that he's here, and that was my stepfather. Okay. Because uh, going to see my, my deceased stepfather was not one of my big uh, goals of this session. All right. But he just, he did pop in. Yes, because he's hanging around with your real dad, which has got to be a comfortable no, in the end. I, I can life. guarantee you that. I don't know. Happen. Well, they're both friends with, through Smokey. <laughs> Smokey, <laughs> introduce them. Call me Smokey. Sells a farming. All right, ready? Also like to drink a bit from what he's showing me, um, but enjoyed life. I feel like he enjoyed life while he's here. And he's telling me that you're not here for him, but he had to jump in and say hi. All right, hold on. That's if all this, the stepfather right there. If this makes no sense, why are you just gasping and... Ah, oh, because I never expected yeah. so people, my stepfather... Amazing! I know, you just said he's not the one that drinks. No, no, but that whole, from that moment when he says the one who drinks till the fact that when he says, even though you're not here to speak to him, he just wanted to acknowledge his presence, that whole little clip is all about my stepfather. Right. That's, that's, oh, that's, that's more about your stepfather, not Smokey Joe. Correct. Right. Smokey had already left with the band at that time. <laughs> they were about to win some money. Hey, 
Who's left with Jerry Reed? I'd have <laughs> slapped your mama just for having you. Well, my uncle's hey, Smokey, home. we better get on the road here, buddy. I think I've got some bugs on my bubble. I want to get the hell out of here. Shoot as I can. Oh, boy, that bandage is about going. All right, let's go back to the tape. If you insist, Al Bandit, I don't care. One way or another, I just want to keep it smoky up my ass. Uh, smoky? Uncle Smoky? <laughs> and, uh, and the last one, I came back as a bandit myself. <laughs> now I come back as uh, Butter Reynolds' old football coach, Bobby Batten. Let's go. And he's telling me that you're not here for him, but he had to jump in and say hi. This is kind of like what he wanted to do. Um, wait, wait a second. Who's the Nancy or the N? All right, hold on. I'll tell you who the Nancy is. Billy sitting there crying like a baby the whole time. Is there a Nancy boy that apparently the entire spirit world wants to talk to? You're the effing Nancy, you fruit. There wouldn't have been a dry high eye on any of you guys if you went through what I went through. Please, I'd have been screaming and crying to get out of there. <laughs> Open the door! You talk too fast! You talk too fast! Or the N N Ann, not Ann. It's like mm. Next, my wife's mother's name is Nancy. Okay. But she's not passed. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now living human beings are coming into your reading. No, no. See, this is what you guys don't understand. You know, you don't watch the show. You don't know how it works. The deceased, the people from the beyond, will mention people who are living now. The proof. Right, who was the one who mentioned your your mother-in-law? Uh, yeah, who's so Smoky? interested in Mrs. Staples' mother? That comes up next. Okay. That comes up next. All right. My wife could explain that better. Please don't. I can't bear it. <laughs> I can't bear it. Next, my wife's mother's name is Nancy. Okay. But she's not passed. That's okay. That's just their way of telling me where we're at. It's okay. their way of like saying, let, let, let us off the street. So I have somebody, whether it be a younger male, a cousin, or somebody also in, in her family who's trying to come through um, and acknowledge. They're talking about somebody either planning a trip now, going to either the Caribbean. What? No, I was saying that's where it ended with talking about the, one of uh, my, my wife's cousins had passed. And that was coming, they were acknowledging Nancy, my mother in law, my wife's mother. All right, what were they related? Nancy was there? You were at a mother? cocktail party with their dead people. Yeah. All right. As far as I know, again, that's the side of the family I'm not too aware of. So now <laughs> dead people who you don't know are showing up. Hey, you know what, Ron? It's all opportunity, man. <laughs> You don't have opportunity every day to reach the living world, so if there's an opening, if the portal's there, these people are going to grab it. <laughs> Thank you for being the portal right. between dimensions. The porthole. <laughs> so special. Planning a trip now, going to either the Caribbean, Florida, or something that's coming up down south. I'm going to say that this is Florida, and I'm going to say it's Disney World, because ah. they give me this feeling of I'm going by where the mouse is, I'm going with the ears, I'm being dropped down there, and I'm seeing something that would be upstate, out of state. All right, now, the Disney World thing mm -hmm. c completely confused me. This cousin of your wife's is screaming Disney World? No, that's two different, two different, complete, two different complete thoughts there. It was like the cousin I just wanted to acknowledge, and he goes, then I'm seeing a trip. It was, uh, like, it was like completely... Coming up. He said coming up, but it's actually one that took place already. What happened? <laughs> then, that, then that's not the trip. Yeah, it is. Again, if it's, it's one that's coming up, then one that's already happened is the next. All right, Fez. Oh, hold me, on. Okay. Ask me if I uh, have a trip coming up. Ronnie, uh, trip coming up? Wow. I just <laughs> took a vacation last summer. See? Name an American who has not been to Disney World. They might as well have said you've ever been out trick-or-treating. Yes, Everybody. I have. Everybody's been to Disney World. Uh, I just went trick-or-treating on the 31st. Put it this way, I was 30, I was in my late 30s before I went to Disney World. But so. everybody goes there. What's so funny about that? You wear mouth ears. <laughs> yeah, I did. All right, Horde King has written in that his daughter's listening tonight and wants to know what's wrong with Billy. And you can tell her absolutely nothing. <laughs> Why are children crying now? Why are children that are listening to the show now right, breaking you, down in tears? When uh, you went to Disney World, mm -hmm. were you driving with a smoke and a bandit down there? <laughs> All right, so he says you've got a trip coming up. You gasp and start crying because at one point in your life you'd been to Disney World. No, we went to Disney on my honeymoon. Most people do. Now, oh, which, most people do. Most I'm people telling you. with little kids. My little brother no, did. No, a lot of single, uh, you know, a lot of people of all ages go there. Yeah, it they sell packages. I know. All right. 
You can get married at Disney World right around in that damn pumpkin. I know that. What ghost... I drew the line on that one. <laughs> what ghost brought up Disney World? That's what I don't understand. That's Cas that my Casper. <laughs> <laughs> he seems to love it. Billy, this is just nuts. No, it's not nuts, Ron. It's... Everything you're doing, you're just trying to make this guy. But there are so many things in my life that he could have touched on, but yet everything was whatever very he specific. Whatever he threw out, you would agree with and say it happened. Okay, well, you wait. You guys everything... throw something out to me. Let's see what happens. Throw Plus, everything out. he threw out touches everybody's life. Who doesn't know a cop? Who uh, died in a fiery crash? You said fiery crash. No, he said fiery crash. <laughs> he said impact. He found out that a cop... That's not a fiery crash. An okay. impact is not a fiery crash. He said crash. a fiery impact. And he goes... Oh, he... I'm not going to go through it again. Okay. I, I just want to end this, Fez. It's killing right. me. And when he's not going to understand. Let me just say yeah. that if a cop, a man who is a police officer, dies young, for that man to interpret it, there's a very good likelihood that it was in some sort of accident or in the line of duty. So you th you're telling me you think he's just playing the odds on all this? I'm saying he's throwing anything out there and you're leaping at it. <laughs> all right. The last thing on this tape will all prove right, my point. All right, let's the see plant it. reference. Oh. And I'm seeing something that would be upstate, out of state, not in the city area from what they're showing me. All right. That was That's, my uncle. All right. That, uh, that includes the entire planet <laughs> Earth. That was my uncle who we referred to. We also talked about the Great Lakes area that was put I'm... in the wrong spot. <laughs> So they took something else, edited it, and stuck it back in there. That's smoky talk. Yeah, that, was, that would be the smoky oh, area. Oh, this is the most confusing, ridiculous thing I've ever heard. All right. Wait, wait till we get to the steps. They trees all around this. Oh, yeah. They're trying to show me a house with a porch where there's like two or three steps going up, and either the second step or one of the steps are broken or the wood's off or it's splintered, and they're telling me to tease you about when is this going to be fixed. Proves it right there. What are you talking about? My wife and I had an apartment with an outside staircase. The second step was broken, and she always busted my chops to fix it. Was it upstate? Was it out of state? No. <laughs> it was in Levittown. All right, and, I mean, all right. <laughs> and Billy, Jeez. this was before you were stapled. You were 400 pounds. Most of the steps you were on at that point were <laughs> but, broken. But it was only Jeremy Coleman's thinking of making you pay for a staircase out here. But it was only the second step that was broken, and that is specifically what he mentioned. Honey, how many homes need repairs? How many need the second step fixed? I he could have say said a huge amount of them <laughs> need the steps fixed. When it's a 400-pound man living there. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. If anything, he should have said to you, you need a ramp. You yes. were really big then. Yeah, I was very heavy then. Yes. All right. And they're telling me to tease you about when is this going to be fixed? Well, when are we going to fix this? So I don't know if your wife is saying, fix this, this needs to be painted, this needs to be sanded. And then we can tease her about the tree of the plant dying. There's something about the tree of the plant being dead. Right there. That is a conversation that only took place between my wife and myself. Yeah. Okay? No one else knew about it. Uh, we were, everyone, whenever we would have a conversation about having kids or something, I used to joke with her, how can we have kids? You can't even keep a plant alive for six months. Here's the thing. Bless you both for not having children. And I mean that with all my heart. Bless you both. You've done the right thing. I feel we should write you a check for not doing it. Um, all right. So what you've basically gotten here is let's tease a man about home repairs. <laughs> let's tease a woman about growing plants. Next thing you're going to tell me is Bob Vila came through, right? You, no, not at all. You don't think there isn't a woman out there that's had a, that's had a dead plant? But didn't say dead, just teasing about the plants. Yeah, right. Wasn't specific. <laughs> but exactly, you got specific with this other thing. If he would have said, look, your wife wants to have a baby, and you don't, so you tell her uh, there's no plants. Now, all he does is bring up plants. You're, oh, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, you guys are just so... Seriously! Oh, come on! He hasn't said these things. Yes, he did. It's right there in front of you, and you're failing to say it. It's so clear as as day. It's vague, Billy. Oh. It's vague. Fezzy, if it was you, I, you know... Yes, I've killed a plant before. He would have nailed me. He would have nailed it perfectly. Because I killed a plant one this time. This was, was probably one of the most remarkable experiences of my life. Uh, I, that's sad. <laughs> no, it really isn't. When you find that I... You know, what about the coming vacation to Disney World you had three years ago? <laughs> You're looking forward to doing that? 
Again? That you already did? Well, the other thing is we had planned on going back there for our fifth anniversary, oh, but we never made it. Oh, oh. that's amazing. <laughs> All right, that's the end of this. We'll I'll talk right. to Mrs. Staples next, who... Uh, okay. Uh, can prove the, everything. Well, who can prove it all. All right. I saw her at the end of it crying with you, and uh, yeah. the two of you were just bawling, and... But, Billy, do you think we had any points? I mean, I know we're not going to sway you mm -hmm. and your belief system that this was legit and it really happened. But do you notice that we made any points? Yeah, you did make points. I mean, you can uh, take a look at anything that you don't believe in and dissect it. I mean, you don't believe in it. And you was, you're basically thinking that everything is on a logic principle, where if you just shoot for the averages, that if somebody my age lost a friend and he died in a horrible crash, or, you know, mm -hmm. you're looking at the, you're playing the odds on it, you know. And, All you, right, and when you have a simpleton nodding at you the whole time, agreeing oh. with anything you say, oh. <laughs> that it really, really helps. Now, after we pointed out all these things, Billy, it means nothing to you. Absolutely not. Okay. All right. That's cool. 877-692-1027. Ron and Fez. 1027-WNEW. We're Ron and Fez. Ron Bennington. Fez Watley with you tonight. All right. Heckler wrote in on the answer feedback. Note to self, pick up Billy Magic 8-Ball for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Been talking to Billy Staples, who had a session with John Edwards from the Crossing Over Show. This is a couple years ago when they shot one of the first episodes of it. The first episode. And Billy, completely enlightened by his reading. Sure. Mm -hmm. Still am. Still believe it 100%. Running a, more than a little skeptical of how this works. Especially after we had the chance to go over it with you. Yeah, and you really didn't prove anything differently to me. All right, we're going to end this up, but your wife wanted to talk to us first. Hi, Mrs. Staples. Boys, boys, boys. I don't know. Smokey says hi. Smokey says hi. I, I just wanted to let you know, first of all, um, when I went with Billy, I went into this thing totally skeptical because it's totally against my religion to believe in this. And I, I like says, I'm Lutheran. Oh, jeez. So you honestly think Martin Luther King is coming back one day? Well, I wish he would have come back to me, but oh. not Martin Luther King. <laughs> I guess it wasn't my turn to overcome. All right, so uh, Lutherans don't go for this, Fez? We're not supposed to believe it biblically, spiritually. It's in the Bible. We're not supposed to believe it. It gets in the realm of sorcery when someone's yeah, practicing now, it. Absolutely. Wasn't so, there psychics in the Bible or soothsayers no, and prophets, stuff? prophets. And those prophets. are God-inspired prophets. There's a difference. All right. But the point was, I went with Billy. I was totally skeptical. And we did not talk to anybody. I swear to you. We, we were in a little room. We watched television. We didn't talk to anybody. We didn't discuss anything. And the things he came out with, the things that are not on the tape were more astounding. I wish they had, but it was the first show. So they edited a lot of things. They've learned a lot of stuff since then. There's a lot of stuff on there that is like personal stuff that I will not discuss on the air involving Billy's family, his relationships with his daughter, things like that, that were not brought up on the show, in, like on the air. And, I mean, the fact that he got my cousin. I, I've had people in my life die that I have total peace with, that I don't need to communicate with. But so I had a this cousin. was strong enough to turn you against your own religion? Not turned against my religion. It did enable me. I went and got John's book. Uh -huh. And I read about the John's good book. book. And, huh? The book the of John. <laughs> yeah, the book of John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, I, I read his book, and the one thing, I mean, skeptical or not, the one thing that's really positive that did come out, and the one caller pointed out, is that because of, of this door being open, whatever you want to believe, it enabled a lot of relationships in our lives to be mended. You know, because I don't want to wait till someone's dead before I have to, like, start going to a psychic to say, listen, I'm really sorry that I didn't get to say goodbye to you. And Billy didn't even talk about it. He talked about Billy's whole, I believe, with this whole thing with him getting the job with you guys. Oh, please. He, please? <laughs> if I would have known no, that. Why so couldn't he have warned dead. us? <laughs> he talked about, he doesn't predict the future because he's not like a fortune teller. And he talked about how, like, he did see that Billy was going into a field involving with communications and computers and radio. And, and he hadn't even started air sick at that point, I believe. So he couldn't talk him out of it. <laughs> no, I didn't want to. I, what, I if, what if he had said, "I see you being air sick"? <laughs> well, air sick, air sick's a profitable business. So, 
I'm like this. I'm like this. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mrs. Staples. Well, I really wish you would read the book, and you know, I can't I, imagine. I'm sorry that you feel the way that you do, but it, it, I mean, there are fake people out there. Yes, John Edwards. Okay, well, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I, I would love to see you guys before Christmas, and I hope that you know you you uh, change your mind about this. Okay. Okay. Thanks, All Mrs. Right. Staples. Bye, Sarah. Right, bye, bye, Ron. And here's our chance to say goodbye, Mrs. Staples. <sighs> I'm glad you guys believe. I'm glad it gave you something, Billy. Well, it did, Ron. She did. seems more touched than you are, Billy. I didn't realize you were so into the Bible. My God. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. I was just like, wow. Now that's you call the scripture, crazy. for God's sake. <laughs> now you think that's crazy. I was never a big uh, religious guy to begin with, so that's no. nice. I know, I know. Seriously? Seriously. All I'd have to get you into is one tent. You'd be down on your knees praying to be bored again. Someone will be on an orange sheet collecting money at JFK. Uh, emptying that wallet, just dumping it into whatever basket they bring by. <laughs> Free last! Free last! Look, Ronnie, they healed my arm. Was it broken? No, but look how good it works. All right. No more talk about all this stuff. Ugh. Well, Billy, you're a character. I'll say, I'll give you that much. You are a character. Well, and thank you for uh, listening to it and playing it. So that was people... enjoyable. Yeah, it was enjoyable. I never laughed so high. Oh. And you are adorable on this tape. Yeah. You and, got a heart of gold and huge and a head of cotton. <laughs> you're just lovable. And when you just took your little chubby fingers and went, put it over your mouth in disbelief. Yeah, I, I, so cute. I like you better at 400 pounds. <laughs> Is there any way to get you unstapled? No. Yeah, there is, but I'm not going to do it. Let's do it. Get the staple puller. No. <laughs> I don't want to be that with fat again. You saw my pants inside. What the hell? How big they were? I know. It's so cool. <laughs> Never again. Ryan Pets.